this video, we're going to show how simple and seamless it is to connect to a Cassandra data source in Noe, perform some aggregation on the returned results, and display those results into a visualization. Now, to get started, navigate over to the uh, data sources tab. And from here, we should be able to connect to a new data source. Now, Noe supports over 30 data sources, as, as mentioned earlier. And to connect to a Cassandra data source, I uh, go into the top and select the data stacks icon. Give this a uh, um, put in your credentials with the data source name, the user ID properties, and the password and key space information. So let's give this a Unix space for now and just call this uh, Cassandra database demo. Test the connection to make sure this is good. And while we've seen a successful connection, we could save this and begin querying from this data, uh, data source right immediately. Cassandra instance in Noe means that you don't have to do an ETL on your data before uh, uh, querying that data set or performing some aggregations to it. Uh, we have a native integration to Cassandra. And so with that, as, as we saw how simple it is to pull in our, to set up the credentials, and that's how simple it's going to be to query the, ta uh, the, the information on your, the data on your tables, perform some, some aggregation and, and uh, visualize that information. So let's select the table to work with. So from this drop down, we're going to select the demo table. A demo data uh, table and while that's populated and let's give this report a name so let's call this Cassandra uh, query number one now a few things to note here so we, uh, with Nomi we when connecting to your Cassandra database um, we we do support uh, very uh, the, more, uh, the various data types uh, Cassandra does support such as uh, JSON um, objects arrays uh, and tuples as well and the other thing to note is we identify, we uh, auto detect the the keys the, that are within your Cassandra table, uh, such as the primary partition, the clustering, and secondary indexes. And to see that information, uh, going into the metrics uh, section here and clicking into this field presents you with a list of columns within this table. And as you can see, it's been tagged with the various keys that are associated to this uh, to this table, um, such as the secondary keys, the partition key and as well a clustering key if we had one uh, set up on this table. And so to do that, so we can um, we can do a, a query builder from here and select what fields that we want to visualize and we want to uh, pull information for. Uh, so let's select a few of those guys here and then uh, and, and as we can as we select from the left side, it auto generates the query on the right side. Uh, a few things to note, so as, as, as we are doing this uh, CQL query generation on the fly, you can also code in your SQL query within this uh, uh, this query editor section here, um, and the same the same syntaxes that you would utilize when query the same native syntaxes you would use for SQL are supported on Novi, and so you can write that here. Or uh, if you're like me and you're not a SQL wizard, um, you can utilize this query builder to uh, to build up on the queries and the uh, from the query editor. Uh, so let's select a couple more, and then we can preview this data set. So let's go with uh, one more from this, and let's get the uh, let's get the customer name into this. Um, so now I've selected a handful of columns and applied a limit to this. Uh, so let's preview this data set and see what's returned back. And as we can see, that, that information has been quickly retrieved back from our uh, Cassandra instance. Uh, a few things to note was, um, you know, there were some of the limitations of Cassandra would being able to perform uh, high level or advanced level aggregations and seamless aggregations uh, with a in a, um, as you can in a relational database. Uh, some things that you can do with Noe is uh, utilize this Cloud9 QL query, which is a SQL-like syntax to perform um, a, a, a robust and advanced level um, aggregations in your Cassandra data, uh, data source. And so as we've, if, as we've returned some data back from, uh, um, from Cassandra, if we wanted to, we can apply some information, some uh, aggregation and transformation to that, utilizing this Cloud9 query. Or we can just keep the data set as is and then proceed to that. So let's uh, you know, save this data set and make some transformations with it. So I'm going to save this, save and run this. Um, and while that's running, I'm going to go ahead and create a new, uh, new dashboard and drop in that widget that we've just created. So that new data set, um, we're going to play with that and visualize that differently. So let's call this Cassandra dashboard. Save this. Now what we're going to do now is pull in that data set uh, of what we've just ran. Automatically, we try to identify and, and, and present a visualization based on the records that are returned from your, from your Cassandra query. 
Alternatively, we can change this into one of the 30 different data um, widget types and chart types that are supported. Let's transform this to a uh, data grid for now. So we can see the data represented uh, in a more tabular format. So we can take this data set from here um, and apply some transformation using the natural language querying. So let's do, uh, you know, some, uh, let's do opened by customer and message type. Um, so what we've done now is sum the, the opened uh, by customer and, mes and message type, and we can apply visualization to this and, and drop that to that dashboard we've just created. So let's use the stack column. I think that might be a bit more representative for this sort of uh, data type. Apply the grip in this to make this look better. So let's use message type as a grip in. And we can save this, and, or rather clone this to, uh, to, um, to the dashboard we've created. So let's call this um, uh, Cassandra opened by customer and message. And now we've dropped this into here. So now to take a step back and see what's happened so far. We've pulled in one query, this query on the left side, um, to return the data sets from the Cassandra instance. And then we've applied that to create two visualizations with two separate views from, from uh, the Cassandra database. Now, it's, we can see that, that flow by going into the data diagram and backtracing that to the Cassandra query. And we can see this is where the query came from. It generated the results. And from that result, we've created two views from that. Um, again, just to re reiterate uh, and run through what we've done so far, we created a data source, a Cassandra data source, uh, pulled in some information from that, from that, from the uh, from the table there, um, and as well as that, uh, from there we can identify what our keys are: the partition key, the secondary indexes, uh, and the clustering key, um, and then perform some aggregations and, and, and transformations on this data set um, in a seamless fashion. In the same way, we in what we did the first time was just pull in this data. Now, if you wanted to apply some transformation on this, let's take a look at what this would look like. So let's preview this one more time to see what the return data set looks like. So we have this, and so if we wanted to do something like select, uh, let's go with uh, message type. We can see how powerful this Cloud9 QR query is, which is a SQL-like syntax to, uh, as an enhancement, uh, uh, as an enhancement or tool built on top of your CQL uh, query generation. So if we apply select message type, and let's do some um, opened, and also uh, let's do conversions as well. Some actually let's get average conversions, and let's pull in as well the customer. And so now we can apply our group by column. So let's group by message type and customer. And let's order this by the customer and message type. So if we run this now, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to go in a sequential top-down uh, uh, waterfall format. So our CQL query is going to run first. And the results of that is going to be uh, cached. And then this second query, the Cloud9 query, is going to run uh, on top of the returned CQL query results. And we should see the returned results from this, which presents us the sum, uh, the sum of opened and the average conversions uh, by customer type and by, by um, uh, uh, message type. So let's reorganize this a bit and uh, clean this up a little bit. So that we want customer first, uh, bring message type in, and then uh, let's change this name to average conversions. see. I think there's something off here. Let's take this off and drop this back in here again. There's a bit of a typo in my Cloud9 query, so I'm missing the S in conversion. So if you run this one more time, so let's clear this out first of all, and let's rerun this uh, the preview of this query. So that should be sorted out now. Perfect. Now that's the result I was looking for. So as we can see in here, as we've seen here now, it's, you know the that's the proper results we want. So we've been able to 
run our uh, uh, Cassandra query natively in its language, and then take the results from there and do some post-processing on top of that results to do some transformation. Uh, this would be more familiar to uh, as you as you if you've used any other uh, relational uh, uh, SQL-like uh, uh, databases. And so this uh, the Cloud9 query gives you a lot of uh, flexibility to enhance the results of your Cloud9 query and perform the transformations and um, uh, uh, and, and then apply aggregations on top of your returned C9QL datasets. Um, if there are any questions, is uh, if you have any questions or more tutorials on how to uh, follow along to uh, to any questions around this, uh, do visit our documentation page at um, novi uh, docs So it's going to be docs .novi .com. So Let's see, my spelling is a bit off today. Here we go. And this documentation should be fully searchable uh, and find out some more uh, use cases and how to uh, work with your Cassandra data source. Uh, and then apply and, and pull data from there, connect you to the data source, query that, and turn that into visualizations and dashboard. And For more information on how to get the best out of Noe, please visit noe.com/university. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.